the Chase Thomas Podcast for people who have nothing but time to kill. And they really I mean, pushed both Georgia. Of those teams went what eleven and one in the regular yeah. season. And I think there's this misconception that Notre Dame is just all like is playing. They don't have the same like I think in the NIL landscape, people are like, oh well, Notre Dame they don't play in a conference or Notre Dame they. They just, Brian Kelly left you for LSU. So that must mean that Notre Dame can't be this, that, and the other. I think Notre Dame is the best just buy low candidate right now this offseason because I think they're going to have a good seed. I think they're going to win a lot of regular season games. And I think if they can keep Riley Leonard healthy, this offense is going to be really good. And I think the defense is always going to be good at Notre Dame with this group. I would not be surprised if Notre Dame's in the final four maybe even the national title uh, this year. I wouldn't pick them to win it, mm. but Notre Dame making the final four, having a deep playoff run, going undefeated in the regular season, none of that would surprise me. I would buy a lot of Notre Dame stock right now. They have the talent. They have the coordinators. I really like their head coach. I think, I mean, they won what? Five won straight or five, five six to close last year. They have momentum. Like I would buy into the fighting Irish going into next year. I think they'd get a lot of crap and they don't, really deserve it so no i'm gonna say on this list who i'm who jumps out the most to me in that area it's notre dame matt green have i swayed you at all i definitely thought you were gonna say texas um but yeah a little bit so would you say riley leonard is mm. as good or better than sam hartman i i think he's better is he better? Can we can we count on him being healthy for well? For 12 games? It's that, but it's also like he at least played in a pro style offense last year. Like Sam Hartman plays in a very different kind of scheme at Wake Forest. Like that was a little bit different. Him having to go under center. I mean, he's going to be his legs are are his best asset in my opinion. Like, can he can he truly like that? It has to be a completely different system than what Sam Hartman is doing. He's just to me, Sam Hartman is like your your classic just kind of prototype pocket passer. But you can have more success in college at times with the guy that can just kind of make plays with his legs and make things happen. So we've seen it before. I don't I don't know that he's actually better. Is this roster better than it was a year ago? Yeah, the roster's definitely, but I also it's hard to go from that the mesh the mesh concepts that he was running in the class and offense, which is effective um down there in Wake Forest. They were running different stuff uh, with Mike Elko and company last year at Duke. I, I just think it's going to be a more seamless transition. I think Sam Hartman was fine last year for Notre Dame, but I think Riley Leonard has more upside, and I think he's going to be be a better fit. I think Riley Leonard's going to have a really good year at Notre Dame. Yeah, I could see it. I could also see us talking about Notre Dame being 10-2, and two, and it's like, yeah, you know, but they lost – both of those games while Riley Leonard was out when he missed like three or four games in the season. Like I could just see something like that uh, happening, kind of derailing their season. Not that I'm wishing have injuries you on their schedule anybody. though. Um, I don't have it in front of me now. Okay. Matt Green, I don't see two losses here. Like, I don't know how they lose two games. So they open at AM, which is going to be huge. Obviously they open at AM. That's going to be a gigantic game, but then Northern Illinois at home, Purdue on the road, Miami of Ohio at home, Louisville at home, Stanford at home, at Georgia Tech, at Navy, Florida State at home, Virginia at home, at Army, and then at USC to close. Wow, they play three road games the whole season. Uh, um, one, two, th three, uh, four. No, they play four. Five. What, what do you mean? Purdue? What are you counting? A&M, Purdue, and USC. Hold on, look. It's Purdue, A&M, Navy, Georgia Tech. Um, those say... Those say Army and USC. Those say verse. Georgia Tech? I'm looking at their schedule. I'm looking at it right, right now. I don't know. This is a I'm great rating. I'm looking at rating. it right now. It's at Georgia Tech. <laughs> it's at... Okay. Wait, no. It's at a neutral location. Navy and Georgia Tech are at neutral locations. They got a little asterisk. Uh are they? Where are they playing? Oh, they are playing. Navy's at MetLife Stadium. Ireland or something? They are playing Mercedes-Benz. Why is Notre Dame and Tech oh, playing at okay. Mercedes-Benz? Gotcha. What is that? Who's got more Why? fans at, at the Benz? Georgia Tech or Notre Dame? Notre Dame, no question. <laughs> 
Um, so yeah, that's so crazy. three so three road games. Obviously USC, like that's always going to be a challenge. But I mean, Florida and M's a not... huge challenge. Open things up. Exactly. So uh, and then you got Florida State sandwiched in there. Like I'm, I uh, there's some losable games on that schedule. I'm just I'm kind. I kind of am schedule. still. I kind of am still the believer that I think Brian Kelly is one of the best coaches in college football, and I I wonder if he did max out how good Notre Dame can be in the 21st century. So, you know, Mm -hmm. I think the jury is still out on that, but you know, this could be the year Marcus Freeman uh, proves me wrong. Um, Final big one here. I wanted to pick your brain on Matt Green. Do you think it'll be harder or easier for a non blue chip team to win in the expanded playoff? Like, cause there's two schools of thought here, right? That, Hey, there's going to be more volatility because there's more opportunities for the big dogs to get upset early, um, that they also have to win multiple games in a row, and that if you get the right matchups in a row, you might avoid some of those heavy hitters if you're not a blue chip ratio team and you can make a deeper run. There's two schools of thought on that. And then there's the other one, which is like, who is going to have the dudes to be able to go 3-0 and or 4-0 and without a top 15 roster in the sport and run that kind of gauntlet? Because one of the reasons we were able to see Washington and TCU do this is because they only had to win two, uh, one playoff game to get to the national title um, yeah. with the regular season run. It, it's a little bit different to ask those Cinderella's to do it two or three or four straight times um, to get to the national title. So what say you, which one do you lean towards that? We're going to see more volatility at the top and more outside of the top 15 blue chip ratios teams make the college football national championship. Nicely done, nephew. The Chase Thomas Podcast. Hell yeah.